In the opening sequences of the movie, we find ourselves aboard an American submarine that is encountering difficulties near the Cayman Trough. The lights flicker out and the controls are briefly unresponsive, causing concern for the crew. Seconds after the hydraulics are restored, the submarine scrapes against some rocks, causing it damage. Now completely out of control, it crashes into the seabed with water flooding in through its breached exterior. What happens next? This is Movie Shortens. Follow us today to the movie titled The Abyss 1989. Be aware, there are spoilers. Following the opening credit, we witness a naval vessel responding to the tracking device of the submarine. Its crew make contact with a group of employees of a drilling company led by Virgil Bud Brigman. Though in the middle of an operation with some of its crew members manning submersibles, Bud quickly calls a halt to their activities. Next, in a video briefing with the Navy, the team is told their company has volunteered their services. They are to support in a salvage operation due to their proximity to the now defunct submarine. They are offered three times their normal pay for the pleasure. Bud attempts to resist this, claiming his team to lack the experience to assist in this safely. However, he is told they will be joined by a SEAL team to provide the necessary expertise. Soon we cut to a scene of Bud locked in a video conversation with his soon-to-be ex-wife, Lindsay. They are arguing. She is clearly unpopular with both the military men and the drillers, all of whom have labeled her trouble due to her uncompromising tone and willingness to speak her mind. Nevertheless, it is Lindsay who is escorting the Navy SEALs down to the underwater platform in another submersible because, we learn, she built it and knows it better than anyone else. Before entering the platform, Lindsay informs the SEALs of the risk of entering the pressurized environment, telling them that 1 in 20 people can't handle it. Hiram Coffey, the rather arrogant mustache-sporting leader of the unit, is dismissive of this, however. On the other side of the chamber's door, Catfish DeVries, one of the oil workers, jokes with another hippie. He claims he has fought guys tougher than the SEALs and that his right hand used to be known as the hammer. Now, on board the platform, Lindsay begins to inspect it. She is worried about the rig. She has been working on it longer than she has been married to Bud, in fact. As the two of them explore it, she questions why he is still wearing his wedding ring, claiming she hasn't worn hers in months. They begin to row. At the end of this, in frustration, Bud rips off his ring and throws it into the toilet bowl. Regretfully, however, he then removes it and puts it back on dyeing his hand chemical toilet blue in the process. Back in the action zone near the moon pool, Coffee is attempting to take control of the mission with Hippie fearful of joining it due to the possible radiation leaks. Coffee leaves the oil workers with no uncertain impression who will be leading the operation, despite the protestations of Bud. He instructs the team to be suited up and ready to dive in 15 minutes. In the meantime, another more friendly seal, Monk, shows Hippie and Catfish a special underwater breathing technology that is used when undertaking a really deep dive. He demonstrates this using Hippie's rat by dropping him into a small tub of fluid. Though initially overcome with anxiety, the rat is able to breathe using the fluid to the shock and surprise of the oil guys. Next, the divers descend on the wreckage of the submarine to look for survivors. They are supported by an ROV named Little Geek, controlled remotely by Hippie. Coffee soon reveals the submarine to be carrying a number of nuclear warheads with more power than that used at Hiroshima. Inside the sub, the divers split up with Bud being accompanied by the most sizable member of his team, Jammer. Having seen some crabs emerging from the mouth of a corpse, Jammer begins to panic. Bud calms him down and advises him to stay put while he checks the final chamber of the sub. With Bud now out of sight, Jammer's lights begin to flicker. Then, in his visor, we see a strange pink creature appear before him. At this sight, Jammer tries to flee, heavily knocking his diving gear as he does so. This changes the settings, causing him to ultimately lose consciousness. Meanwhile, from her vantage point on another submersible, Lindsay catches a brief glimpse of the same brightly colored being. Back on the main platform, the guys watch the news. There is speculation as to whether or not there was Russian involvement in the submarine incident. It is also reported that a Russian vessel had been sunk in a separate collision with an American one, killing those on board. As the drillers take this in, Coffee and his team are preoccupied elsewhere. Without permission, they have taken one of the submersibles back down to the sub and are busy relieving it of one of its warheads, which they bring back to the platform. In the next significant occurrence, the impact of the looming hurricane begins to make its presence felt. Below the surface, one knight is attempting to secure the rig using a submersible. However, above the surface, a crane aboard the Navy vessel collapses and plunges into the ocean, hitting the seabed mere meters from the platform. It then rolls over the edge of a trench and begins to fall into the depths, tugging the platforms towards the edge as it does so, causing chaos on board. The platform eventually comes to rest in a precarious position, but not before several crew members have been killed in the flooding that has resulted. Monk is among those injured. Hippie is, however, able to save his rat. 
As the remaining members of the team attempt to repair what they can and salvage what they need, Lindsay suits up and heads out of the platform to collect some oxygen canisters. Here, she has her second encounter with the alien species. This time, she is able to reach out and touch what she later describes as a non-terrestrial intelligent being. She deems it to be friendly and inquisitive rather than a threat. Later, via a surveillance camera mounted to an ROV, Hippie spots that Coffee is in possession of a warhead. He shares this information with Bud and Lindsay, the latter of whom goes to confront him. One of the SEALs grabs her, but Bud summons the rest of his team in support. There is a brief standoff before the oil workers leave. At this point, we see Coffee clasping a pistol behind his back. Thus far, Bud has been highly cynical about Lindsay's sighting of the aliens, but he is soon forced to reconsider. A snake-like seawater-based arm creeps into the oil workers' quarters, where it is able to mimic Bud's facial expression. It appears friendly. Next, however, it makes its way towards Coffee, who is less impressed. He closes an automatic door which severs the lengthy intruder and causes it to collapse to the floor in droplets of water. The crew are beginning to suspect Coffee is suffering from paranoia as a result of high-pressure nervous syndrome. Having carved a series of cuts into his forearm and forced his fellow SEALs to take up arms, he then carries the warhead down a corridor. He attaches it to one of the ROVs, Big Geek, with the intention of sending it down to the trench to blow up the aliens. He remains convinced they are connected to the conflict with the Russians. He is met with resistance from the oil workers, with Monk also questioning his decision. They can't, Monk suggests, make it to the minimum safe distance in the three hours they'll have before the weapon is programmed to explode. As Coffee heads off, the workers he has imprisoned are freed by a reawakened jammer. Coffee has, however, jammed the door leading to the exit point and submersibles. As a result, Bud and Catfish attempt to swim underwater to a different door and open it, but are unsuccessful. Leaving an out-of-breath catfish there, Bud heads to the moon pool and slips out of the water. He approaches Coffee from behind and makes a grab for his pistol. Coffee realizes this though and attempts to execute him, but fortunately we learn that Monk has removed the bullets. The two then engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat with Coffee swinging wildly at Bud with a knife. With the oil worker's time seemingly up, Catfish emerges from nowhere to knock down Coffee using his famous hammer. Coffee survives this though and makes a getaway in a submersible, with the ROV and warhead attached. A concerned Bud suits up and follows him in the hope of freeing the warhead to prevent Coffee from launching it. In a struggle, the ROV is freed but plummets to the depths. Bud is, meanwhile, rescued by Lindsay who is driving another one of the underwater vehicles. A major tussle then ensues with the two submersibles continually crashing into one another. Finally, Coffee's severely damaged one falls to the trench down to the depths, killing its occupant as it does so. Lindsay has also sustained serious damage. Water is gushing in, but Bud is unable to help her stop it. She then begs Bud to get suited and swim her back to the platform, knowing that she will drown, but at least they'll have a chance of reviving her. In the next sequence, the other workers spot a wetsuit-clad Bud swimming through the water, clutching Lindsay's body. They arrive and Bud tries to desperately revive her. He is on the brink of giving up and slaps her face, yelling at her to fight. At this point, a pale and weakened Lindsay sputters back to life. He has saved her. The next concern to be dealt with is the missile tip now resting at the bottom of the trench. The crew realize there is still time to disarm it. Bud himself volunteers for the mission. He is kitted out with a special white suit and the same liquid previously demonstrated using Hippie's Rat. Although initially shaken by having to imbibe liquid to breathe, Bud quickly overcomes this and is dispatched on his journey. Though he is able to hear instructions from above, he can only respond by typing using a keypad attached to the forearm of his suit. The heavily weighted oil worker then begins his trip downwards. During this, Lindsay communicates with him to keep his spirits up and to re-engage him when he becomes disoriented. She is being supported by Monk, who is familiar with the challenges of such ventures. During the lengthy fall of the ROV, Bud loses power and is lost. When he arrives, he follows Monk's instructions to disarm the bomb and is able to do so successfully, despite the poor visibility. Once this is completed, however, it turns out that he only has a few minutes of oxygen left to breathe, and it took him 30 minutes to make it there. Lindsay is devastated to receive a message from Bud telling her he'll stay there a while, that he knew it was a one-way ticket and that he loves her. Before Bud passes through, he is greeted by one of the brightly colored local inhabitants who reaches out a hand. He is then towed to the hub of the alien civilization where, using their power to control water, they create a room in which he is able to breathe. Here, the aliens communicate to our hero via clips of news stories. Having witnessed the war and devastation mankind wreaks, they have unleashed a series of tidal waves to destroy the world above. We watch as thousands of people flee coastal areas as the gargantuan waves loom down upon them. At the last minute, however, they stop, then hold steady before finally retreating. Humanity has been saved. 
Bud asks his own savior as to why, and they show him his own messages. His self-sacrifice and love had given them new hope. In the final scene of the movie, the alien ship moves slowly up to the surface, carrying the oil drilling platform and its inhabitants with it. They arrive and exit without decompressing, but experience no side effects. They are then joined by Bud, who walks out of the ship to embrace and kiss Lindsay. He greets her as Miss Brigman. It seems these events have saved not only the world and Bud's colleagues, but also his marriage. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.